Coming up, we talk outlaws in Texas, lots of weekend late model racing coming up. There's changes at Longhorn Chassis and more. Let's go. Today is Friday, March 4th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. We'll kick things off today with the upcoming World of Outlaws weekend in Texas. They take on Cotton Bowl Speedway tonight and tomorrow. These are the first two races we've had with the Outlaws since Dirt Car Nationals ended, as the trip through the South last weekend was lost to weather. Following these two nights in Texas, next up for the Outlaws is a couple weeks out west for the traditional spring West Coast swing. With just the three nights in Florida complete so far, David Gravel leads uh, Donnie Schatz in the standings by 14 points. Sheldon Hoddenshield is 16 points back in third, with James McFadden and Brad Sweet completing the top five. Gravel, Schatz, and Sheldon were the three drivers to get victories in Volusia. Gravel is also the only driver to finish top five all three nights so far this season. Shots, Gravel, Sheldon, and McFadden all finished top 10 all three nights for Dirt Car Nationals. The Outlaws have appeared at Cotton Bowl four times in the past, with Brad Sweet winning twice, Sheldon once, and David Gravel once. Sheldon and Sweet split the Cotton Bowl weekend a year, uh, just one year ago. I have three of those races in the DirtTracker.com analytics database, and Brad Sweet leads the way in average finish with, uh, with Gravel second and Sheldon third of those drivers with multiple starts. Sweet has also been the top qualifier at the Texas racetrack, averaging just a tick more than a second place run in time trials in the previous three appearances. Cotton Bowl winners have an average feature start of third as well. So if you're going to uh, you win one of these races, you're going to have to qualify up front and start up front, which is usually about par for the course with the Outlaws. Volusia is certainly its own beast, but it's in the rear view now. And this weekend at Cotton Bowl, we'll get into the real meat of the types of tracks we'll see regularly with the Outlaws all season. If you want some win predictions, the DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula actually favors David Gravel. I'm a little surprised by that pick, especially with Sweet's past success at Cotton Bowl. But Gravel has been very good as of late, coming out of Florida red hot, and he's got the second longest top 10 streak with the Outlaws right now at 11 straight races. I'm going to ride with Sweet on this one. Those two past wins are hard to overlook, and nobody has more wins on three mile racetracks in the past five years than Brad Sweet. I think he'll be hungry to get that first win out of the way after not getting it done down in Florida. I thought long and hard about uh, Donnie Schatz on this one as well, as his 3 8 mile average finish is the best in the series since 2017, but he hasn't finished better than fifth in those previous four trips to Cotton Bowl. So far this year, the win predictor has been correct 24% of the races, while I'm kind of an abysmal 12% correct. Hopefully we can start to turn to that around this weekend. Looks like it should be a pretty nice weekend down in Texas, so if you're near Page, it's about 45 minutes outside of Austin. Head out to the racetrack. If not, Dirt Vision has you covered with the live stream. On the late model side of things, the two national series aren't in action this weekend, but plenty of the big drivers will be. Across the South and Southeast, there's some solid money available. There's two 10,000 to win spring national shows, a 12,000 to win race at Smoky Mountain. There's 10,000 to win at Cherokee on Sunday and two comp cams races at Boot Hill. Uh, those winners will take home a combined $15,000. We'll have to kind of see who ends up going where, but you should see Jonathan Davenport at Smoky Mountain on Saturday and Cherokee on Sunday. Jimmy Owens is also headed to Smoky Mountain, as is Mike Marler, Dale McDowell, Ricky Weiss, and possibly Hudson O'Neill and Brandon Overton. The unfortunate thing about the Smoky Mountain race is it appears as though it's not being streamed anywhere. That's what I would have expected to be over on Flow Racing, but it's not anywhere that I can find. Uh, I find it hard to believe in this day and age that we're going to have a big money show like that that pays 12000 to win. Some of the biggest names in super late model racing are going there, and it's not being streamed. The Spring National shows at Swainsboro and Sonoya should draw guys like Cody Overton, Ross Bales, and Clay Knight, among others. And at the two comp cam shows down in Louisiana, we should get guys like Logan Martin, Morgan Bagley, Kay Dillard, Tony Jackson Jr., and plenty of others. And then that show on Sunday at uh, Cherokee with no other races scheduled against it. I guess the field will be pretty tough there for the Southern All-Star Show. I already mentioned Davenport, but the track has tweeted about Chris Madden, Chris Ferguson, Carson Ferguson, both Brandon and Cody Overton, Ross Bales, and Kenny Collins. Kenny actually grabbed that extreme dirt car win last weekend. 
Both of the Spring Nationals races, both of the Comp Cams nights, and Cherokee on Sunday will be streamed live on Flow. So if you can't get out to the track, there will be plenty of late model racing to watch over the next three days. If you don't have a Flow subscription, click the link below in the video description on YouTube to get one. In some late model news that became official yesterday, Longhorn Chassis and Low and Bro Motorsports are merging into one entity. There have been rumblings of this in recent days, but we got an official release within the last 24 hours confirming the move. Longhorn Chassis is the maker of dirt late model chassis that was founded by Justin Labonte. He's the son of NASCAR Cup champion Terry Labonte. Uh, Longhorn has become kind of come one of the it cars in late model racing, especially in recent years. Drivers like Brandon Overton, Tim McCready, Jonathan Davenport, uh, and obviously plenty of others have dr uh, driven them to much success. Lowen Bro Motorsports is owned by Steve Arpin, who had his own kind of brief NASCAR career, with Lowen Bro being involved now in things like Rallycross and getting more heavily involved in dirt modifieds lately. They've been selling what they call Longhorn Modifieds by Lowen Bro. Drivers like Tyler Nicely, Will Krupp, and Mike McKinney have been piloting those cars. The move is effective immediately, and a big part of Longhorn Chassis is staying put as the company's new lead engineer, Kevin Rumley, uh, is sticking around. He's been instrumental in the development of those late model chassis, even as he's worked alongside drivers like Jonathan Davenport, and then more recently, Kyle Larson, and he's, uh, as he's made his move into dirt late models. Right now, I don't have specific knowledge on the situation, but I don't see any reason why things wouldn't continue to be business as usual for Longhorn customers and Lone Bro customers alike. Hopefully this means that things are going well and the future is bright for the two merged chassis builders. If you want to check out some other sprint car racing over the next few days, Lincoln is back on Saturday for week two and Port Royal opens on Sunday. Freddie Raymer topped Brent Marks and Anthony Macri in the opener at Lincoln last week, which was a nice start for Raymer, who's looking for another track title at Lincoln. About an hour and a half away on Sunday, Port Royal opens their 2022 season, and Logan Wagner will begin his quest for a fifth track championship there. It's basically Wagner and that Zemco car, and then kind of everyone else at Port. Uh, we'll see if anyone can mount a serious charge to kind of knock him off that championship. I'm sure if you wanted to, uh, Anthony Macri could try and do that, uh, knock Wagner off there. But I think we'll continue to see Macri travel more and more outside of central Pennsylvania, which means no chasing these track championships. Both of these shows can be watched live on Flow Racing if you aren't nearby. Other open wheel racing to check out this weekend includes the USCS Sprint Cars at Hattiesburg Speedway for two nights. Through six events so far this season, Davey Franick is leading the point standings over Danny Smith and Chris Martin. Frannick, Mark Rule Jr., and Terry McCarl each have a win apiece, while Mark Smith has three. Out in California, the new promoter group at Silver Dollar Speedway has their first event this weekend with two nights of 360 sprint cars and dwarfs on tap. You've heard me mention it a few times already, but Brad Sweet, Kyle Larson, and Colby Copeland have come together to take over operating that facility with plenty of improvements coming up. Here's hoping they have a strong first weekend. And if you're near I-30 Speedway in Arkansas, the ASCS Elite Non-Wing Series is in action tonight and tomorrow for the wingless short track nationals. 1,000 to win tonight, 5,000 to win on Saturday night. Keith Martin topped Chris Morgan and Justin Zimmerman, uh, Zimmerman last season in this race. Two series you won't see in action this weekend as originally scheduled are the USAC CRA Sprint Cars and the USAC Western States Midgets. They were supposed to race at Thunderbolt Raceway in Tulare and Keller Auto Speedway in Hanford, but the weekend has been dropped because of impending weather. Officials are trying to reschedule the races for the future. The Spring Cars will return on Mar uh, March 26th at Paris with the Outlaws, and the Western States Midgets will open 2022 at Placerville on March 26th with the Sprint Car Challenge Tour. The streaming services are busy this weekend with 11 shows set to come today uh, and more to come this weekend. That includes the World of Outlaws, whoops, wrong button. That includes the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars on Dirt Vision, plenty of late model racing on Flow and re uh, weekly racing from Lincoln and Port Royal. We've also got the US MTS Modifieds on Race and Dirt and a lot more. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Friday and a good weekend. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll be back on Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily.